Rana Day is exceptionally important to us. The reason being, education is our first step. We're going to walk down and just you know, see if we get a little bit of interaction here between two different species. So one day in the opportunity, you will join the Let's no matter when the gun down, raining or not, I always there with the guys. Why in the siege or did no bandy lele, the hellinge, the tringang, the balangaba? I wonder, the animals is out there, is it right, is it safe? I don't know, I don't know, nobody said off in Kangba, St. Kaluk Vuka. But I love my job. Morning everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Shimori TV. It's a World Rhino Day today and I don't think there's any other better way of paying homage to these animals besides doing it from on foot up close and personal. So join me for the next little while and let's see how incredible these animals really are. So as I've moved off of the ridge down onto this open area over here, I've picked up on two rhinos over there, which is obviously, a, that's what I, I specifically wanted to walk this morning, which is awesome. And then their the head suddenly went up and they got into alert posture and Obviously it wasn't for us, we still quite far away. And then out of the bush came a nice big elephant bull over here. It's quite a dynamic situation. We're gonna walk down and just you know, see if we get a little bit of interaction here between two different species, but I think it'll be quite nice either way. Rana Day is exceptionally important to us. The reason being, education is our first step. Poaching is not gonna get stopped just by us on the ground. We need to inform as many people as possible. We need to educate the youth of today. And we do so by using Rhino Day, creating awareness to the community, creating awareness on a social media platform, trying to get the word spread that this is a reality of what we're dealing with. Poaching overall has come down. We've decreased by almost 50% over the COVID period, but that was primarily due to the provincial travel being blocked. Now with provincial travel being open and international borders being open again, we have the fear that poaching will increase. Ngokwenza ke le job, yo protector e rhino, e we we see protector zogi animals, but our job is based more focus kwi rhino. Zia poacha, so we see ngendlela engcinga ngayo in the next maybe 20 years i rhino zabe zishota kakhulu lapha South Africa that's why we trying all our best to our rhino safe for the next generation next generation of generations So as we're walking we've got the the elephant that side we've got the rhino in front of us and then we've got these zebra over here and the zebra have already started giving us a couple of snorts and now they're only slowly starting to move off so nice and relaxed but it's those warning snorts that one species will give that will alert another species to a potential predator so a lot of things to consider when you're walking
giant elephant ball, so I'm at a good safe distance. And then, just across this little open area, I've got these two bull white riders, slowly busy feeding, not really in any particular direction. Generally, when they found good feeding and they're very relaxed, they'll feed in almost a circular type motion, so there's no real direction of movement that they'll take. I'm Christopher John Stratum. I'm the senior canine handler for Shamori Private Game Reserve. My dog's name is Blade. He's a Belgian Malinois. They high work, high drive dogs. The relationship that I have with Blade is actually it's coming to it's coming quite quite a long way now. Luckily, we knew each other beforehand before I took him over from the previous handler, so the transition was actually very easy. The advantages of having a dog like Blade in the APU team is. The following up on spur, following up on crime scenes and that type of thing is, goes a, a lot faster than what man tracking would allow it to. They can follow spur over areas that people simply wouldn't be able to follow it. And they, they can move at a much faster rate than what a, what a normal man tracker would be able to move at. My passion for busy protecting the rhino, protecting nature in general is I don't want to want my children to see an animal in a storybook. I want to be able to physically take them, show them the animal so that they can see what it's all about. Places like Shamari are so vitally important for conservation, for looking after the species. We, you know, we, we have such a phenomenal team of guys that are just a network of guys that are looking after this, this area to ensure the safety of these guys. Everyone can play a role, everyone can play a part. And you know, we've got to make sure that this species is here for children's children's children to see. Um, it shouldn't come down to uh, it has a horn that we want to use so we're going to kill it. Got to educate, got to keep on teaching got to show the importance of this animal alive and not dead. And there's, there's nothing more soul destroying than, than seeing a rhino carcass on an animal that's been poached. It is, uh, it really is soul destroying. Uh, it's, you know, those, um, those images are seared into my brain forever. I'll never forget stuff like that. today on World Rhino Day is not to the rhinos, it's to people. I, I hope and pray that they realize that killing that animal for a horn is, uh, is not the way to do it. There's no, uh, there's no purpose in that and losing a species will be more tragic to this planet than what we know. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Kearney. I'm the Ranger Manager at Shamari Private Game Reserve. I just want to take a moment to say thank you very much for all the support and feedback that we've been getting on our brand new channel, Shamari TV. If you haven't followed us yet, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for our next episode, and I'll see you right here at Shamari Private Game Reserve.